So again, I can't recognize this equation if I don't recognize the original parent function, which is our x squared. I see that it's been shifted to the left, negative 2. So that tells me within parameters, I have to put a plus 2. I know that because I'm shifting left or right, so that's got to be within my parameters. And since I'm shifting left, I'm going to put the opposite value. I also know that I've been shifted down negative 4. So that means that I'm going to put that negative 4 on the outside. Can't forget my x, and I can't forget the original part, the parent function. I don't really know. I know that this is positive because it's going in the upward direction, but I don't know if there's a number out here. It's very possible there is. I would have to check whether or not this is truly the original x squared function. Okay, but in general, we now have a good, decent original equation to start with, and that's x plus 2 squared minus 4. But why did I want to know that? Well... If I know that my original function, my h of x, probably looks like something like x plus 2 squared minus 4, then I know I can plug it into this and figure out what the transform graph is going to look like if it tells me to sketch it, right? So that becomes negative 2 times this whole h, except x plus 1, right, plus 3. So I'm going to put in my h right there, except for my x, I'm going to do x plus 1. So that becomes negative 2 times my h, and instead of x, it's x plus 1. So this becomes x plus 1 plus 2 squared minus 4, and all of that is inside. Then the plus 3 gets tacked on. Right? So if I keep on going, this is just going to become x plus 3 on the inside x plus 3 squared, and then that's, that minus 4 would come down, but let's go ahead and distribute that negative 2. So the negative 2 is going to be here, but negative 2 times negative 4 is going to become positive 8, and if I drop these parentheses, that becomes plus 3, so that's negative 2 times x plus 3 squared plus 11. So I'm going to look for something that's been shifted to the left 3 units, that's been shifted up 11 units that's been reflected over the x-axis and possibly has been scaled by 2. So I could draw that graph, and that's going to be shifted to the left 3 units, shifted up 11. So this is 11. This is negative 3. We're going to go down because it's been reflected, and possibly we're going to make it a little bit skinnier, right? Not possibly. Definitely we're going to scale it down by that too, but... That's what we would be looking for for that transformed graph. Okay, solving this polynomial. In order to solve a polynomial, first and foremost, what does it mean to solve? Well, to solve, it means get it by itself. But what does it mean to solve a polynomial? What are we getting by itself? If we're getting x by itself, more than likely, you're actually looking for the roots of the polynomial. That's usually what it means to solve for a polynomial specifically. We're finding the roots. And what are roots? They're any time uh, that's not a... That's not what I meant to do. I meant to draw the x-axis. That's some sort of crazy squiggle. It's any time I hit that x-axis, right? And what happens at each one of those x-axis points? Well, it's some x value, but my y always has to be 0. So when we solve for a polynomial, we know that we are always setting our polynomial equal to 0. The only time we're not is when we're given more information to, to go for it. Otherwise, if we see solve, we know that we're pretty much solving for those roots. So I'm going to set this equal to zero. Okay, the very first thing I can do is I can pull out uh, a common factored term. Okay, and that's going to be x squared minus 15x plus 6 equals zero. Well, now I can recognize that this right here in the center is factorable. The other thing I could have done is I absolutely could have used synthetic division. I could have found common roots, blah, blah, blah. I could have figured out all of that stuff and gone from there. But the easiest thing we could see is that there's a common factor of x and we can get it down to a quadratic so we can factor. Okay, so uh, oops, there's a 6 missing right here. So I can factor this one of two ways. I went ahead and did a times c and grouped. So a times c is 36. And if I find factors of 36 that are going to get back to 15, we're actually looking at negative 3 and negative 12. So that becomes 6x squared. I'm going to ignore this x on the outside for a second. 6x squared minus... Ah, Minus 3x minus 12x plus 6. And I'm going to group 6x and negative 12, and I'm going to group negative 3x and 6. So that becomes 6x squared minus 12x 
plus 6 minus 3x. And I can see this as a grouped form, and this is a group form. And so I can pull out a 6x here, and that becomes x minus 2. And I can pull out just a 2 over here, and that becomes, uh, nope, I want to pull out a 3. That's what I want to pull out. 3, and that becomes 2 minus x. Well, I want this to look like this this end over here. 2 minus x is not quite the same as x minus 2. But if I remove a negative value, if I just remove a negative 1 from each point, if I pull that negative out, then that actually becomes, uh, where else can I write this? I'm running out of space. You know what? We're just going to do this. There we go. Okay. So then that becomes 6x times x minus 2 minus 3, because remember we pulled that negative 2 out, and that becomes um, negative, or sorry, positive x minus 2 now. Okay, and so then I see I've got a common factor right here, and I can literally pull that out as if it's a factor, right? x minus 2, and what's left here? Well, 6x, and what's left right here? Minus 3, and that's my factored form. And I could test it back and make sure that we get that original, and don't forget my original x on the outside. And, of course, we set this equal to 0, and we have a root right here, we have a root right here, and we have a root of 3 over 6, so 1 half. And so those would be our three roots, and that's that would be the solve of the polynomial. And I believe this is our final question, and it says write the equation of the piecewise. So this is a linear, this is a linear, and this is a quadratic. Probably this is just going to be x squared minus 3. So I can go ahead and try that. I don't know if there's a number out front, but we could test it out. We could make sure. Um, or we could also check our answer choices if it's multiple choice. And then this is linear, so I would just check its slope, which is up, oops, uh, yeah, up 3 over 2, and the slope over here is up 2 over 1. Its intercept point, this one is going to be negative 3. This intercept point is going to be positive 6. So now I know my three equations, y equals 3 halves x plus 6, y equals probably x squared minus 3, and y equals, what did I say, 2x minus 3. And then all you have to do is figure out where it goes from. Well, this one goes from negative infinity to negative 2 and it includes negative 2. This one goes from negative 2 and it doesn't include it all the way to positive 3 and it does include it. And this one goes from positive 3, not including, to positive infinity and you can't include an infinity. So that's how you would write that piecewise function in any way, shape, or form. You don't have to necessarily write the interval like this. You could do x is less than. You could kind of write your interval form however you want. And I believe that's the end of our unit review. Yes, it is. So make sure you study real hard. Get ready for that exam. It is on Thursday and we'll see you guys in class.